Hello and welcome to the sheet. I am Zen and I'm your IELTS instructor. Well, today we're going to write a description of a line graph and a table together. Well, before you do anything else, you need to have a look at the question that is given. So let's have a look at the question. What does it say so that we know what do we need to do with this line graph and the table that we've got. The graph and table below give information about water use worldwide and water consumption in two different countries. So that's the statement. And then the real question is, summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. So what are we looking for? We need to summarize the information. How are we going to do that? The question says, select and report. So in our writing, we must have the main features, we must have comparisons, and we must summarize the information. Since we have to select and report, we do not have to talk about every single point in the graph. So we have to be precise about what we write about. And in the table too, because we have a bit of information, the same goes for the table. We have to select and report, we have to summarize the information, and we need to talk about the main features and make comparisons where relevant. So, now, since you have this line graph in front of you, let's have a look at the line graph first. So, what do you have? We have three uh, different sectors that we're talking about. We've got industrial, domestic, and agriculture. So, three sectors are there, industrial, domestic, and agriculture. So, if you look at the line graph, on the y-axis, you have the units of water, that is, kilometer cube, and they start from zero and go up to 3,000 kilometer cube. If you look at the x-axis, what do you have? You have the time limit from 1900 to 2000. That's a hundred years. And they're divided into decades, like every 10 years, 1910, 20, 30, 40, and goes all the way to 2000. So it's a hundred years period, a century. Which century is that? 20th century. So you need to know these things. Then, if you look at the values for agriculture, the value starts at 500 almost, approximately. And for the others, they're around 100, maybe less than 100. And the agriculture by the end has gone up to 3,000. Industrial is around 1,300. And domestic is around four, three, four, five, approximately. We'll have a look at them. Okay, so you need to know these things. And then if you look at the table, look at the information provided, we've got three variables, population, irrigated land, and water consumption per person. And these, are for, these variables are for two countries, Brazil, Brazil is a South American country, and Democratic Republic of Congo, an African state. So why have I just told you about South American and African? Because you need to have a bit of information about the things so that when you have to replace these words, like you can't keep writing Brazil, Brazil, Brazil. If you have to replace the word Brazil, the name Brazil with something, then you could go with the South American state and that won't be wrong. Okay, but if you go with Brazil all the time, that's not wrong as well because that's the name at the end of the day. All right, anyways, so now the next point is how do we select? And because we have to select some points, we don't have to talk about everything. So let's start with the line graph. What sort of a line graph is that? Single variable or multiple variable? Definitely multiple variable, because we're talking about three variables here. Okay, the first point that I'm gonna talk about is because you need to talk about the most important ones, because if you have a look at the question, it says main features. So you cannot ignore the one which is a leader. So here the leader is agriculture. What I would do is, if you have a look from 1900 to around 1960, there's a certain type of a change. If you remember my first video, I told you different types of changes. So this to me looks like an average growth a gradual growth sort of a thing. So from 1900 to 1960, let's say 1955 to 1960, that would be my first point. So I'll talk about this point first. What sort of a change is that? Then if you have a look here at the value, it's around 1500. So from 500, it's gone up to 1500. It has traveled. So I'd keep a note of that because then 
The second point would be from this point onwards till the end, from 1965 somewhere, till the end of the century. And have a look, from 1500, the value goes all the way to 3000. Doubled. You see the connection? So that's sort of a comparison that you could use. 3000. In around 35 years, three and a half decades, the value has doubled. 1500 to 3000. Okay, so that's my second point, and that's also the highest point, so I must talk about that. Then I come down to the other two, domestic and industrial. Now, if you pay attention, there's almost no change till the middle of the century, very little. So you could say that the values almost remain constant or remain stable till the mid of the century. So this is my third point. First point, in the agriculture midpoint then doubled in the last three and a half decades second point third point I've talked about both of them together instead of talking about them separately so I've talked about both of them together that helps me in my task achievement where the examiner has asked me to summarize the information so I've put them both together instead of talking about them separately helps me in my summary so I've talked about both of them together. Till the middle of the century, there's almost no change, or there's a very little change, or it remains almost constant, after which the industrial use, if you see, it's around, what, 200 maximum? And it's gone all the way up to 1300. What sort of a change is that? Is that dramatic? Uh, well, if you look at the angles, it's around 45 degrees. So I would say it's more than average. It is, let's say, substantial. So, I'd use the word substantial or huge. Then you go on and look at the domestic. So that was my fourth point when I talk about industrial use. Then I talk about the domestic use. If you have a look at the domestic use, it has remained at the bottom and by the end of it showed a minimal increase. And by the end of the century, the value stands at around 400. So now you can compare these values, 400, 1300 and 3000. So 1300 in the middle for industrial sector is almost the half of, or slightly less than the half of what the agricultural sector consumes. And if you look at the domestic use, it's one third of the industrial use. So that's a comparison. I've prepared these notes in my mind now. I'm actually pointing them down on the graph as well. And then I move on to my table. So if you have a look, is there a comparison between the two nations? Look at this. Population, 176 million compared with what? 5.2? No comparison. Look at the irrigated land, 26,500 kilometers square of irrigated land. For Democratic Republic of Congo, just 100. So if you look at 100 and 26,000, 26,500, Remove the two zeros from the bottom and from the top, you would get 265 on the top. So it tells you Brazil has 265 times more irrigated land. And then the last one, water consumption per head, per person, or an average Brazilian consumes 359. 359 meter cubes of water compared with the meager 8 meter cube for the Congolese. Congolese. People living in Congo are called Congolese. So how do we actually write the graph? First thing is the introduction. So what do you need to do? You need to paraphrase the information that is given in the question. Paraphrasing does not always mean that you have to uh, replace every word. You can have a look at the meaning and you can write the same meaning in your own words. That would do. But when you're writing your introduction, please do not use the words which are given in the question. If you do that, that is not a good idea. You'll not get a good score for your vocabulary, lexical resource section. If you don't want to replace every word and you want to go the other way around, then you can have a look at three things that you need to have in your introduction. So, what type of graph is this? What does it show? What units are used? Perfect, you're done. The second thing is now you can write the second thing that is the overall with the introduction some people write it separately both are perfectly fine in the overall you talk about whatever is easily visible when you look at the graph what stands out what's the most important trend that you see there 
So you talk about the most important trend in the graph in the overall. Do you understand? So if you look at the graph, what is something that stands out? By the end of the 20th century, agricultural sector consumed the highest amount of water at 3,000 km3. So that's the most important one. And Brazil outscores Democratic Republic of Congo in every variable, in every sector. That's it. We're done. We talked about the most important things from the graph, which are like easily visible. And then you move on to the body. Remember, we made some points like number one, number two, three, four, and I'd use this sort of a change is there. We have um, average growth, we have minimum growth, we, the numbers are doubled, substantial, huge. So when we were looking at those uh, changes, why were we doing this? Because we have vocabulary for each sort of a change. So if you're not familiar with those changes like uh, minimal change, average change, substantial, or extensive change and then very extensive change. I've given you the vocabulary for all sorts of changes and you have the link to those in the video above. So just click on that cards panel and you'll get that video and you can watch and get to learn the vocabulary. Now let's move on. So you choose the vocabulary for all those changes that we've already pointed out like number one first, number two next, three, four, five, six, seven, you're done use different vocabulary and use different structures too. Remember, I've taught you before these different sentence structures, like you can use noun and adject adjective and noun in a sentence. Then you can use the words like saw, experienced, enjoyed, suffered, and then an adjective and noun. And then you can use a verb and an adverb or adverb and a verb. And there are some specific points like the highest and lowest. You can talk about them too. So have a variety of sentence structures, but pay attention that this chart, for example, is in the past. Why? Because it starts from 1900, goes all the way to 2000. And this is 2020. I don't know uh, what year is this when you're watching this, but still the time here is definitely from the past. So try to use the past tense. You can use past, past simple, uh, past continuous, past perfect in your writings to show a variety of sentence structures too, or a variety of tenses. Use variety of vocabulary. If you used one word for a change, let's say you've used the word growth, don't use it again. Use the word like grew. And if you've used both of them, then use a different vocabulary. So describe these changes, this six or seven that you've already pointed out, and your body paragraph is done. If you want to write two paragraphs in the body, like one for the line graph and one for the table, that's perfect as well. There's no problem with that. At the end, if you want to score, let's say more than 7.5, then there must be a conclusion. And uh, conclusion is very similar, very similar to your overall. But this time, use a different set of words. If you don't write a conclusion at the end, that would be okay too, because Logically, there's no conclusion here, but since some examiners would want to get a conclusion from you, if you want to score more than 7.5, if you're looking for a 6, 6.5, you don't need a conclusion. You'd be okay without that because some examiners don't need a conclusion. They feel that in graph writing, we'd be writing a description, there should be no conclusion. But some examiners want that, so why take a risk? Remember, we have to write a minimum of 150 but a maximum of 180 words if you write around 200 200 plus that's not good and some examiners believe that if you write 50 words extra you're going to lose 0.5 bands and if you write 100 words extra you're going to lose a band so and that's from a very credible source from one of the british council trainings so I wouldn't risk writing 200 words in the graph. 180, 85 maximum, that's it. I'm not going above that. If your teacher tells you to do it, well, good enough. I won't. Okay, just for information, whenever you're writing a graph, remember you have 20 minutes for it. And it makes up one third of the score of your IELTS writing part. So you just have 20 minutes for it. Spend the first five minutes planning then the next 10 to 12 minutes writing and the last three minutes checking okay or two minutes checking 